Hi, I'm Mahesh Thapa from StarvingPhotographer.com and welcome to Adorama TV. In this video, I want to help you get awesome, detailed, and color accurate prints from all your photographs. Tell me if this has happened to you before. You take a beautiful photograph and carefully edit it before having it printed or printing it yourself. When you look at the final output, it doesn't quite have the same look or color or detail that you expected based on how the image looked on the screen. Sound familiar? This has certainly happened to me before. I created this video to help you get as close as you've ever gotten to matching what you see on your monitor to what you see in your prints. Now, it's not going to be a perfect match. Let's just get that straight right from the beginning. Exact match is frankly impossible because no matter what you do, reflected light is never the same as transmitted light. What you see on your monitor is transmitted light and what you see on a print is reflected light. That's just physics. In preparation for this video, I reached out to the print masters at Printique and got their perspective as well. They make hundreds and hundreds of prints a day on various media, so I knew they could teach me a thing or two. They were in fact super helpful and provided me with a lot of practical advice, which I'll share with you. There are basically four components to consider, and we'll go through each one separately. First, is your monitor calibrated? I asked Printique if they recommended any particular hardware monitor calibration tool, and this is what they had to say. We use X-Rite, but we generally find calibration to be imperfect and recommend ordering small proofs to get a sense of where our printing sits in relation to what you see, then adjust accordingly. I love this straightforward advice, which I found to be completely true. I calibrate my monitor using the X-Rite Color Checker Display Pro, and it does a great job getting me about 90% of the way there. For the extra four to 5%, I rely on test prints. Remember, no such thing as 100%. No matter who you use, I recommend reaching out to customer service for a discount on test prints. Second, upload a properly edited file. To get the maximum detail from your prints, make sure the uploaded files are set to 300 dpi or ppi. If you're making a large print, you may need to up-res your file. For example, when I made a 20 by 30 inch print, I had to make sure the total dimensions of the print was 6,000 by 9,000 pixels, which equates to 54 megapixels. Remember, this is to maximize detail. Certainly, you can upload a smaller megapixel file and you may not be able to notice an appreciable loss in detail depending on factors like the media you print on, viewing distance, and personal tolerance. But to maximize the detail, Printique and many other print centers recommend 300 dpi. If you want to calculate the exact dimensions of your print, try this website, pixelcalculator.com. Third, embed the appropriate color profile. What color profile should you embed in your digital file? Many online services will accept any color profile, but I recommend either Adobe RGB or P3, both of which have a wider range than sRGB. Finally, what file format should you use to save the file? According to Printique, and I can vouch for this with personal experience, there is no noticeable difference in print quality between uncompressed TIFF files and high quality, low compression JPEG files. This corresponds to the level 10 in Photoshop's save option. If you are thoughtful about the four principles we just went over before making your prints, I think you'll be much happier with the quality of your prints. Before ending this video, let me go over a few questions I frequently get asked. One, if I have a relatively low resolution or highly compressed file, is a certain print media, for example, canvas, better at hiding the imperfections? Any textured media would hide some imperfections. Also, dye sublimation prints can soften or obscure some imperfections because the production process involves heat transfer from a solid to a gaseous state without first passing 
through a liquid phase and is all very organic. Question number two. If I need to up-res my file, do you recommend any particular software like Photoshop or Gigapixel or something else? Whatever process you use, the key is to see how the final image looks on the screen when you finished up the file. If there is compression artifact or strong haloing around the high contrast areas, it will likely show in the print. But it might not matter if you're making very large prints where people won't be looking at it up close. Personally, I use Gigapixel AI when up my files, but that really is personal taste. Three, is there a certain print media, for example, canvas or metal or paper or acrylic, that does a more faithful job of color reproduction? It really all comes down to individual preference again. Personally, I think actual paper prints on semi-gloss texture are the most accurate overall. All right, what printing-related questions do you have? Ask them down in the comments section, and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching.